Hey, welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm just Terrell. You ever been out somewhere and overheard two people having crazy conversations? Well, we all those people who have having these conversations since college. Yep, it's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts podcast. Love is Blind, Season 6, Episode 8 and 9 recap. Be sure to like, subscribe, rate, and leave a review. See, I had to button up my last button, make sure I, you know, tease anybody on here, you know? <laughs> Me with my Jimmy body, I didn't want to tease anybody and get them all hot and bothered this evening. <laughs> no, no one's going to be excited about the taco meat on your chest. <laughs> Just let that go. <laughs> I, it's, it's, you know, I, I come from the Hairless Tribe. We don't have taco meat. <laughs> Hey, shout out to everybody checking in. Karen, um, good evening, guys. Hey, Allison, I love what you're saying. The pods are open. Let's go. Exactly. Yeah, the podcast is open. <laughs> hey, you know, somebody haven't seen in a while, man, has jumped back in the chat. My man, Drew. <laughs> what up, homie? <laughs> Long time, man. Long time. Um, look, so much to get to. And, you know, and I want to say this. We covered episode seven yesterday, right? And I know some people decided to jump ahead and we're going to address some of those comments uh, when we get, when we finally catch up to where they actually came into, but man, some of y'all jumped off the cliff quick. <laughs> Jesus, what is going on? What the hell? <laughs> yeah. I think, I think we might've poked the bear on some people. <laughs> I, 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 I think even the bear was irritated. Like, damn, really? Y'all upset for this? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Amanda, we're glad you finally caught up on the episode. So now, now that we're getting to the last of these episodes before they drop 10 and 11, we can address all the stuff, including those comments that were there from Jesus yesterday. <sighs> I'm just letting it, I'm just letting that live right there for a second. All right, let's go. Yeah. Let, it Let it marinate. Let it marinate. Let it marinate. <laughs> Let it marinate. And exactly, Bodine. Ain't nobody playing with Kenneth. Exactly. <laughs> no. All right, let's get to it, man. What's that? What you got there? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I wouldn't say anything. Oh, Actually, okay. I was going to respond to Sean unfiltered, let him know about the Laurent interview, but I highlighted it. We can talk about it after. Okay, cool. Um, well, let's get started with Chelsea and Jimmy then, because, you know, um, they're going to go see Chelsea's place, and her roommate is there to greet them. And the first thing Jimmy immediately notices, yeah, she's too much. Uh, I already got enough to deal with with Chelsea. I'm not dealing with two of them. There's no way we're moving in here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, his, his, her roommate, Tiffany, just the energy that both of them have, I couldn't imagine being in the same room with them for mm -hmm. a long period of time. Uh, and then what did Tiffany say? Just let so you know that we're married. <laughs> so like, I'm like, this is some kind of menage that she's about to hook up or what? But it, it was a lot. But her place seemed really small for two people. So definitely there's no way that Jimmy would ever move in there. Um, so real quick, uh, CJ says, is it me or is Terrell a, a little, sound is a little bit low? I don't know. Anyone else? High vibe? How's my sound? <laughs> you know, high vibe will tell you how it is for She'll real. She'll tell me. Yeah. <laughs> or, or Marjan. Yeah. UTSA Roadrunner, how's my sound? Do I sound? <laughs> Where's hey, my you know snare? what was interesting? Um, I, uh, Drew says, uh, sounds good to me. Um, Erica says, I can hear him fine. Everybody else is saying you're good, so it might be their computer. Um, so back to Chelsea and Jimmy. Um, Jay says, Jay Noel says, did Chelsea lie about having a dog named Trevor? Because we didn't see that dog, right? Did she lie about having a dog, period? Did you see a dog? I didn't, but a lot of people did say when we talked about that in that episode that she was joking, that she had a dog named mm -hmm. Trevor. So maybe she she really doesn't have a dog named Trevor. Who knows? Right, and that could, that could be it. That <laughs> that could exactly yes. be it. So maybe she just didn't have a dog, period. Um, Jimmy's place is small, but at least he doesn't have a roommate. Uh, true, but his place was actually pretty nice. You know, I, for <laughs> a good little bachelor pad, I thought it was... Uh, pretty nice. So if Chelsea moves in there, it's going to be tight. But I think two it's people could do that for, they need more. for a year. And a studio? I think two people could do that for a year. You think so? 
Okay. I mean, for two people uh, in a studio, that's tight. So I'm assuming when we see Chelsea's friends and they show up, they're back in that shared space that Love is Blind is, playing, is paying for, right? Um, so her friends show up and she starts telling them about her experience in the pod. And of course, Trevor comes up. <laughs> because as she told her friends, a bunch of guys wanted her. <laughs> Made it sound like she was just the top pick of everybody. Her and Jimmy were the top ones of everybody yeah. else in the pods. Uh, yeah, so she's talking to her friends and just really getting all giddy about it and kind of explaining the pod experience. They go outside because Jimmy's upstairs working. Um, and then everything seems good until Chelsea starts talking about, well, he hasn't kissed me once today. And we're like, okay, here it goes. I was hoping that her friends are going to be like, wait, what? Like, that doesn't make sense. Why are you being so sensitive? But they kind of fed right into it um, a little bit. And then yeah. she talks about how really Jimmy saw a picture of Jessica. Yeah. And is kind of all in her head now about that. And that's where we understand where the issue begins, because even then, um, she's just thinking that that's the reason why, right? Well, then Jimmy shows up as, as they start really asking all kind, of, um, all kind of questions and stuff. Well, Jimmy shows up and now they have questions for Jimmy. And, you know, well, how did you know? And, and what was it like? And we understand you were the hot commodity. And he was like, what lies did you just tell? <laughs> <laughs> Of course, he's like, well, 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 thank you. And, and Jimmy's coming off a high because his boss told him today he was irreplaceable. I was like, your boss lied because everybody's replaceable. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> your boss made you feel good today, but you are replaceable. Everybody is. And so he's sitting there in the hot seat as they're trying to fire off questions and Chelsea's trying to make it cute. Uh, did you notice how many rings Chelsea had on each hand? No. So she has three rings on each hand, actually her left hand has four rings because of her mm -hmm. uh, wedding ring. But we talked about oh, this gotcha. one time on the pod. I'm like, girls that have like multiple rings always make me nervous, two thumb rings. So, but we already know Chelsea's crazy. I don't need the rings to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> but then, her, her friends, she asked her friends, who do people say I look like? And they said, Carrie Underwood. And I was like, where, where did Carrie Underwood come from? And then they go... Hey, like Jay DeVos said, they drag poor Carrie Underwood in yeah. this. <laughs> leave Carrie Underwood out of this. And then they're like, oh yeah, well, Megan Fox. I'm like, y'all are not good friends to lie to your friend like that. At all. At all. <laughs> exactly. That is the crazy thing about it. But, but they went along. They were friends enough to... Well, we'll help you with this lie, baby. But... Mm -mm. That's not what people say. <laughs> maybe they're maybe they're ride or die. Like, hey, you want that lie? I'm a rock with you all day long. Everybody says she looks like Megan Fox. All of our friends, even the blind ones, say it. Yeah, she's she's crazy. <laughs> it's all get That'd out. Never better then, off saying Chloe Kardashian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then like her Chelsea is is crass to me, and her friends are too. Because been her friends were asked her before Jimmy came down about. Uh, really trying to loot what the sex is like. I'm like, well, his shoes are really big. Who does this crap? Mm -hmm. I just don't understand. And then I guess Chelsea mm -hmm. does this hell yeah brother thing that Jimmy hates. And I didn't like it either. I was like, oh God, don't, I don't want some girl be dating me, be like, hell yeah, brother. No. <laughs> In the middle of the throes of fashion. Hell yeah, brother. Could you imagine? <laughs> hey, babe. Hey, babe, let's, let's go in the other room and have sex. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be a macho man randy savage or am i with my fiance who am i with today <laughs> you know uh jimmy asked how different is he from her usual type and they beat around the bush obviously and then finally got to what it really was right yeah she said he's nothing like her original type and they didn't really uh, you know give us more context to say is that good or bad because I don't know if her original type is really bad for her uh, mm -hmm. but Jimmy apparently doesn't look like her original type but I'm curious about if they're normally bigger guys or whatever but I'm curious more about what they were like from a character standpoint if Jimmy fits into that or not well here's the interesting thing about it because they try to dance around it first and he's like oh she already told me what she used to date so you guys he almost like was telling them it's okay you don't have to lie for her 
because <laughs> <laughs> they they were trying their best to dance around the topic and it's like yeah there's there's no need to dance around it i already know um so it, it was one of those things that i think he recognizes he's not gonna get the truth from them at all no they're gonna have her back oh, they keep telling her she looks like megan fox so <laughs> They have her back 100%. He's not going to get any tea from her friends. Um, Nadia Nitta says, I have a bone to pick with Yanni about AD. I'll wait. You don't have to wait long. We're about to get to AD and Clay next. Uh, <laughs> I want to definitely um, shout out um, Caltum Ibrahim, who says, uh, I can't watch this live due to work, but please drag Kenneth for filth. <laughs> have no fear. We yeah. got you. We got you covered. <laughs> got you covered. <laughs> we got you covered. But first, let's get to AD and Clay and why um, <laughs> Na Naughty Knitter has a bone to pick with me. But, I mean, I, I don't think it has to do with this part. It probably has to do with a little bit more. But it says, here's the thing. They're going to go see um, Clay's place. And Clay's covering the cold, right? And AD right. calls him out for it. But do you blame him? The cameras are running. I don't need the world to see. I don't, I am not in control of the editing. Right. I don't know which one of these camera people or grips or mic holders are going to be like, well, he did have something nice hanging up in there. Let me go. I know where they are for the next couple of weeks. So I don't blame him for covering the code. You can't blame the man for that. I don't blame him one bit. You know, I don't think he was covering the code because he doesn't trust AD. I think to your mm -hmm. point, there's cameras around. You just yeah. never know who can see the order. Um, his house was nice, though. I mean, it definitely needs. Um, I won't. I don't like to. Use, I don't like the phrase. It needs a woman's touch. It needs a designer. Mm -hmm. It needs someone that could add a little bit more flair. It does look like he just, you know, graduated a couple years ago, bought his first home, and it's mm -hmm. really nice. It's a beautiful home, and I think it's great for, you know, uh, to start a family with. He has mm -hmm. his vision board, in there. Yep. Cause she, yeah, she noticed the vision board, and that's when I really noticed that she has that. What do you call it? The uh, the vocal fry. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, AD, stop! Jesus, stop! <laughs> and we'll get to that later too, because oh my god, why was that so necessary? She turned into the what was that whiny girl from Married at First Sight we talk about that had that all the time? She literally turned uh, into her. I can't. They it's all blurs together at this point. I can't quite remember. <laughs> Uh, but did you catch this where, you know, Clay had these books and so AD asked, have you read all of them? And he said, he's read some of them. I'm like, I'd have dug deeper because I do believe, you know, you have a bookcase. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who just throw a lot of fake books or books they're not going to read, but to make it look like right. they're deep. Mm -hmm. I would ask, like, right. which book did you not read? Why didn't you not read that one? Uh, so right. I think that was, I, I hope she dug a little bit deeper into that. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, overall, I, I didn't really have an issue with his place now do you think that when they get into his bedroom and they're looking at his uh his jersey his, um, i guess they retired his jersey i mean he, apparently he was a baller uh, of an athlete i started to think at this moment i'm like maybe my issue with clay is that he's trying to chase that rush of being an athlete when you have all the fame and everybody loves you that's why he comes across this way where he's trying to be overly charismatic when he doesn't need to be See, where it comes I, across fake i don't know where you get that part of him being this uh used car salesman at times right because but i think it's just part of his character it's not his character but that's his personality and he is he can be that bubbly that way what i did think when i saw his jersey and and the fact that he was a three-time sec all-american basketball player he also ran track for um for the south carolina gamecocks i'm like all right how many women changed their mind about clay because they were dragging him for miles <laughs> and i'm like oh well maybe he's not so bad after all that's the first thing i thought <laughs> you thought they're going to give it a pass because of his a athletic accomplishments and his, yep. you know he owns his house they're gonna be like actually clay is really good i'm like no clay is still clay He's still yeah. who he is. It's great he's got those achievements and he's earned every one of them. No doubt about that. But the dude mm -hmm. still comes across like a salesman to me. I'm still not sold on him. Now, Deja says that um, Clay's the only homeowner. Um, we know Jeremy owned his house before, right? Was yeah, it Jeremy he the sold it. 
it was Jeremy sold that it. sold his. He's renting now because mm-hmm. he wants to buy a home with someone. Right. And then Johnny, because somebody else also brought up um, Johnny, but Johnny is actually ready because he wants to buy. That's a conversation that they end up having and we'll talk about it. So, yeah. So he actually he's the only homeowner right now. Right. It's that's what it's looking like. And I bet um, Matthew owned his own home. Yeah, <laughs> I bet you did. Alice is like, Jeremy's also a liar. Damn, we haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> Damn it, Allison. <laughs> Karen says it's Clay's like, still it's a like jerk. double dutch. They're just waiting for their moment to jump in. <laughs> and and uh, Sapphire says Clay still needs therapy, period. He's got his home, but he still needs some therapy. Okay. All right. 100%. Well, let's. Let, AD is ready to move in, and um, we're ready to move on. Let's get to uh, Laura and Jeremy here. As we get through, because there's a lot to get to in Episode 8 and Episode 9. we got to cover two episodes today. Um, Jeremy's house that we just talked about, he's got a gym um, in the garage. This is, what did he say? He had a four-bedroom, uh, but of course, this is the rental, right? So, Right. Right. But his place was immaculate. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you know me, but his place looks staged, so I can relate. Mm-hmm to that and Laura's so disappointed (laughs) yeah yeah I know yeah because he has you know the the matching gold you know silverware and utensils and all that stuff very Mm -hmm. OC is about cleanliness and I get so Mm -hmm. annoyed when all these people think well guys are normally when they say they're clean but they're really not what kind of dudes Laura's been messing with because even when I was Jeremy's age I couldn't afford to stage my place but my place was always clean uh, mm-hmm. at that time so i'm just like why does people always assume guys places are nasty well she's also saying it gives serial killer vibes but here's the, the labels I had. Jeremy, <laughs> yeah because of the way his labels are and all that but the other here's the thing that's that's crazy jeremy's so clean yet he let laura and actually he did too walk her nasty ass shoes throughout his house and even jump on the bed with the shoes on then he did it too he's not that damn clean we know that you have an issue with that. I totally get it. I'm just saying. Um, I'm just saying. I, I totally get it. But it's his house. He lets people walk in shoes in their house. People can wear shoes in my house. When you come next weekend, keep your shoes on. I don't want to smell mm. your feet walking around my house downstairs. Do that upstairs. I know people have but these the- memes about washing feet um, online. Don't don't don't, <laughs> don't get near my feet. Thank you very much. Stop it. So Laura called him out about the serial killer part. And when he talked about the labels in his refrigerator, it has to be facing forward. It reminded me of that movie Jennifer Lopez was in, I think called Enough, where mm-hmm. she wound up, you know, training to, to whip her husband's tail in that movie. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're that OCT that every label has to be up front. That's a little, or I'm sorry, as Laura would say, it's giving serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, Amy and Johnny. Um, when they go to Amy's place, Johnny finds out that Amy's a Crystals girl and says it's an Im- immediately. That's a flag. Um, I worked at Whole Foods. I, I came across some people that were deep into Crystals, and they were just a little different. I'm not saying that mm-hmm. p- people who have Crystals are wrong. My experience has been. <laughs> <laughs> they're kind they're of a right. little different with the Crystals. <laughs> a little different. <laughs> now... They're talking about finances and both of them on the same page about buying a house as we were just talking about. Um, but Johnny also wants to be frugal, frugal and retire early. And she's like, yeah, well, maybe not so much, though. Let's we got to at least enjoy life. This is where I come in to help you. Well, I think you do need a balance because he wants to buy a house. He wants to retire early. He didn't give an age. And I forget how mm-hmm. old uh, he did. Johnny he said is. 50. He said he so wants, he wants to, be to be 50, retire at 50. So to retire at 50 and how old, do you remember how old he is right now? Uh, not, no. not that I'll important. T- scroll a bit. So, I mean, yeah. yeah, you could live frugal, but then if you think about wanting to have kids, anything could happen with kids. You just never mm-hmm. know. It's, it's, I think they've got to have more conversations around what being frugal looks like, what do they splurge on, and then how do they budget for the what if factor when you have children. Right. Um, they get to talking about kids and birth control and, um, of course, this ties into his finances as well. Johnny doesn't want kids without being financially secure first and still bringing up birth control. So Amy does what I, I've noticed a lot of women doing now, which is bringing up the vasectomy, right? And is this a bad deal? And what she's saying, like, well, because if, if it's such a big deal for him about 
putting her on birth control, then why doesn't he just go on birth control? And you can be sure she doesn't get pregnant. Just snip, snip. And then restart well, her if you need to get, when it's time for kids. <laughs> okay, but you, all vasectomies are not always reversible. So there's a little bit of a risk there. Mm -hmm. And I believe Amy put out a statement. I don't know if you got a chance to catch that. I probably should have forwarded it to you where she addresses the stuff that came up and mm -hmm. because of her health condition that she has, yeah. she's nervous about taking like she different types of birth control, what it's going to do to her hormones. Mm -hmm. So I get it. Right. And mm -hmm. they've talked about condoms. Apparently Johnny's okay with using condoms, but he's worried that he, what if she still gets it pregnant? I'm like, Johnny, where the condom pull out the same time like I, well, I don't I, know I he's he's really he's he has a she didn't share his reason what the way he grew up and why this is a big deal to him but apparently it's really a big deal that he's worried about having babies too soon and that's going to ruin his whole financial planning for himself well that's kind of what she talked about when she's talking to the producer she said that Johnny doesn't think the condoms are just enough right so at the end of the day that's what it is so when people are saying why not the condoms um, or his pullout game is weak? Yeah, he doesn't think the condoms and his pullout game is enough. And apparently he's got super sperm that can, <laughs> you know, escape the condom and will impregnate her immediately. That's why every woman has to be. And maybe if, maybe he has a, a vasectomy, they'll still be able to, you know, jump the ramp and get over there. <laughs> <laughs> he's He's got that marine sperm, right? They're going to make it through. <laughs> He's got that Malcolm X bro, by any means necessary. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the hell? Oh my God. But hey, this 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 is their issue. This is somebody something somebody said in the comments before, too. It's like, wait a minute. They're talking about they want that big fight. This should be their big fight. And as um as mentioned here, why didn't they have uh Sinan's fan says that's a conversation they should have had in the pods. And I wonder if they actually did have that or not. So she says in her post that she did that she did talk to him about her condition and that if she had kids, it, chances are high that her condition would get passed on to the kids. She shared that with mm -hmm. him in the pods. So they did have some of these conversations, but you're not going to spend all the hours in the pods really drilling deep down to this kid issue because it still depends. What if he meets her and doesn't really like her or she doesn't like him? I mean, they still have mm -hmm. time to have this conversation, but at least it's good that they're having it now. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and and still going to be talking about that probably until the re, uh, well not the reunion until what decision day decision. what do we call it in this yeah, show the wedding <laughs> the wedding the weddings there you go good yes <laughs> yeah Danielle says it sounds like he has some childhood trauma um, and Jay Noel says you can't date a Hispanic woman and expect not to have kids <laughs> damn <laughs> really <laughs> <laughs> what happened <laughs> bitty bitty bomb and, uh, bomb. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dorica says he's been extra dramatic. He doesn't think condoms are enough. Then don't have sex, but don't pressure her. Here's where I agree. You cannot pressure her to get on birth control. Right. Right there. And, and, and especially if she has health reasons as to here's why this, right? Even though she says, oh, it will help with this, this, and this. Here's the thing. I, I just don't want to. And you, whatever happened to my body, my choice. Yeah. I don't think he should pressure her. Or is that only work in politics? Well, in Texas, um, <laughs> well, it doesn't work in Texas, but I meant to say, but uh, I don't think he's pressuring her to get on the pill. They're having this conversation because he, she even said that he wasn't. But I think you're yeah. right that if she doesn't want to get on the pill, then we need to find another solution. But her mm -hmm. getting on the pill or, or taking some type of birth control, if that's not going to work for her, you got to figure out a way to work around that. And then mm -hmm. also plan to, because I like how she's thinking, what if a year from mm -hmm. now I happen to get pregnant and we right. already have our home and all that? Yeah, it wasn't planned, but at least we have our home. We have a family. There's enough love to give. And he's like, yeah, no, I, I don't want that because he has his yeah. financial plan. I'm just like, man, you can't be that rigid in your plan. Coming from a planner, that's, I said that out loud. Yes, you can't be that rigid in your that's, plan. That's, that's an orange flag. That's an orange flag. The fact that he's like, no, 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 my plan my plan and my plan and those are the three things and the three goals we have in life my plan <laughs> plain and simple uh, jessica says it go. was presumptuous <laughs> <laughs> jessica says it was presumptuous of him to assume she would be on the pill it was but you know he's like look i've never dated another uh, woman of another race before and all my women 
<laughs> Everybody I've dated over before, here. <laughs> either the IUD or the pill, you got options. You need to do something. But you know, he never said that he. I'm really curious. Is he Mr. Raw Dog, or does he like double up condoms and birth control and pull out mm-hmm. just to make sure I don't mess up my future plan? It it really does sound like because the first thing you and I thought when he started all his nonsense was, you know, sometimes you just got to use a condom, bro. You, you got to raw dog it all the time. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and and that should give her some concern. That alone should give us some concern. But then again, and maybe the whole cleanup is, well, he just doesn't feel condoms is enough. Well, I think it's part of that sentence. He just doesn't feel when condoms Mm -hmm. are enough. You don't feel it. (laughs) Maybe that's what he's trying to allude to. I don't know. I feel like there's more to that story. They just don't fit. They just don't fit. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) These magnums are too small. Okay, Johnny. Uh... Well, I mean, I'm hoping and I think that there's going to be more conversations they're going to have about this um, yeah. on camera throughout the next few episodes. So I'm curious to see where this storyline goes. Hey, Drew's saying it sounds like he doesn't want to have kids. I, mean, and I get it. He's, he's, he doesn't want them before his time because, Drew, my plan, my plan and my plan, the three goals of this entire relationship. Um, mm-hmm. Well, speaking of relationships, this is the one, man. People jumped on this one in the last episode uh, when we just did episode seven. Brittany and Kenneth. Mm-hmm. What'd you think of um, Kenneth's place? <laughs> okay. I have a lot of issues with Kenneth's place, right? Um, his refrigerator being that empty is odd, right? I, I get maybe have some is condiments it, in the door. They've been gone for a couple of weeks. Hold on. I get maybe have some <laughs> condiments in the door or something like that, but to be that empty i was like okay i'm a minimalist i maybe i can see that his cabinets are just messy as hell just stuff just thrown in there but the thing that Mm -hmm. i can't let go is what black man has only two seasonings in his house italian seasoning (laughs) and oregano he said this is the spice cabinet i'm like those aren't spices that's italian seasoning and oregano there's no lowry's there's no tony (laughs) saturies there's nothing that I was just like, dude, and you're in, you're, you're in North Carolina. You're telling me you don't have anything except Italian season and oregano. I call bullshit. Nicole says Kenneth played that Uno reverse card. Uh, then uh, J. Noel say he say pro black with two spices in his cabinet. <laughs> and Nicole is back say he has no spice. Well, but watching yeah. <laughs> watching this, I'm like, I get why he needs a woman to cook for him. Because he can't, he doesn't have anything to cook with. Well, look, at all. That's why he was like, no, well, you got to cook. Apparently, he doesn't know how, how to use seasoning. So, therefore, <laughs> that's what it is. No, yeah, I, uh, uh, something's not right about Kenneth that. Kenneth is given poverty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's something not right about this. It almost reminds me of a... Uh, I forget, was it, uh, yeah, I think it was Married at First Sight, where the girl's like, she doesn't live there. And I'm like, Kenneth, you're telling me yeah. this is where you live, and you have two seasonings, and that's it? Yeah. 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 Lies. Lies. <laughs> um, Cootie Rat says, uh, tell you are correct. That was not his place. It couldn't have been. It couldn't have been. Um uh, well, Matthew has a great point, though. If you don't cook, why buy supplies? I mean, he doesn't cook. I, okay, but Matthew, even if you don't cook, even when I didn't know how to cook, I had seasonal and I had Lowry's. Didn't know what to do with them, but I knew I needed those two things at least to have something. Mm-hmm. It wasn't Italian season and oregano. Not buying it. Jessica says he is 25. That's not an excuse. I was 25 too. He, okay, salt and pepper. Show me salt and pepper. <laughs> the show, basics, me a jar, the show me a jar of hot sauce. <laughs> show me something. But just Italian seasoning and oregano for no, no, 25 is no hot. excuse for that. No, 25 is no excuse for that. <laughs> 
Hey, do us a favor while you're at it, because thank you, Bodine, who says, look, man, 340 watching, 10 likes. Hit that like button while you're at it. You're in here. Please do us a favor. Hit that like button. Um, after we inspect his kitchen and realize there's nothing in there, um, they're sitting on the couch, and, and they're talking about the difference. At least, well, Brittany's talking about the difference in his behavior from the pods and in the DR to now that they're back in, in Charlotte. And do you give Kenneth that pass when he's like, look, I'm not going to be this way 100% of the time. Like, all the, all, I can't be bubbly all the time. And we're, none of us are the same way all the time. We're all a little different. We all can be a little moody at times. We can be up. We can be down. We can be relaxed. We can be chill. We can be excited. Does he have a point? No. Not at all. <laughs> I didn't agree with anything that he Thank said you. right there. <laughs> and here's why. Here's why I didn't agree with anything he said right there. First off, Body language tells a whole story. He's asking, mm -hmm. she's asking how he's feeling. He's like, I'm ecstatic on this phone. <laughs> you're ecstatic. You're, you're ecstatic and just sitting on your phone, just on the couch, just chilling. And so then this whole not being bubbly all the time. Okay, yes, in a relationship, you're not always going to be bubbly every day. You're mm -hmm. going to have mornings where you're not in the mood. You're going to have mornings where you're frustrated with your partner, work, whatever else. But that's after time in a relationship. They've been around each other for seven days. You yeah. can't get it together for seven days and you got to right. be in your, in your feelings for whatever he's dealing with, whatever he's thinking about. I don't buy it. He doesn't get a pass for that. Uh, Shelby says that was such a cop out. Yeah. The fact of, yeah, I'm not going to be this way all the time. Um, I saw get why you're saying now they're back at their place. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, before they get there, I just want to point out. As I'm watching these two on the couch and they get past that conversation, and he's like, you got to give me some grace and all this other stuff. A lot of people were saying this before, and it, especially even in the comments yesterday, <clears throat> that they see friend vibes from them. They don't see this romantic connection with them, right? And as I'm watching them on the couch and I'm like, even when they get to the resolution and they shared a kiss, if I remember correctly, right? It just, it really gave off friend vibes. It, it really did. I was like, damn. How did I miss this? Because we were all rooting for them, right, Nicole? We we were rooting for them. We were mm -hmm. rooting for these two. We we're like, this is the couple. We're like, Amy and Johnny, cool, but this is number one. Amy and Johnny, Johnny just dropped down to number two. This is number one, Brittany and Kenneth, and then we get this next scene with them back at their place. And you knew this was not going to be good when he is over them fries and he is tearing them jokers up. He's not... <laughs> That's <laughs> his conversation with her because at least he had the DC to cover his mouth so he's not spitting food at her the whole time. But I'll be damned, I didn't want to hear her like that. Right? <laughs> Production should have been like, all right, we'll wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll wait. Are, are you going to offer her a fry at least? <laughs> so, you going like, to share some I, fries? I would, I would offer you some, but you might say yes. <laughs> So this is where there's been a lot of things that, that has changed a lot of people's views about Brittany and Kenneth, specifically Kenneth. And this is where mm -hmm. it just really went. It was already going bad from his I'm not bubbly every morning comment down to this part. So apparently Kenneth came in at 1.30 in the morning. Now, mm -hmm. my first thought is this. Now, I've not been married, but do you just right. randomly come home at 1.30 in the morning when you're married? I feel like there's some rules to not that. Not if you there's want peace and Exactly. So then, but he Not comes home peace with, and quiet in the living peace. So he comes home at one thirty in the morning, and then I don't know how he was trying to wake her up, but apparently trying to give her some affection, and knowing mm -hmm. she has to get up at five thirty in the morning, and the lights mm -hmm. are on. But that's what throws me off is because if y'all committed to wait until marriage to have sex, you got to wake mm -hmm. her up just for a quick makeout sesh, and then to go back to sleep. Okay, they haven't made out though. Right. It's one of the so things what that you came, up, came up in this conversation. What are you waking her up for? To do what? What'd you even do that? You could have just climbed into bed and went to sleep. Will you wake her up to what? Talk? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, he said in, in that whole conversation, he said he wanted to, because he, I think it was a cop out, right? In, in that sense. Uh, I'm going to use this as an excuse because you're right. There's no reason to wake somebody up when you come in late other than to be like, I'm here um, uh, to get some. 
Well, they're right. not giving each other none, so therefore there's none of that. They're already not making out, so it wasn't to make out. And even if he came in drunk and maybe a little horny, then there's, y'all not going to that place. You already decided that. So it wasn't. I think it really was um, just in a sense to be able to say, well, I tried to love on you, and which is what he ended up saying. I tried to love on you, and right. you turned me down. And she's like, no, I was sleeping. Right. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, don't wake me up for us. We're not having sex. You just want to wake me up just because doesn't make sense. And I don't believe mm. his story. So you went to, I know mm. getting your hair twisted, I've never had it done, but I know that's not a 30 minute trip to the barbershop. Like I get my hair cut. I get mm-hmm. that could take some time. Right. I've had mentors. I've never hung out with my mentors late night ever. Mm-hmm. It's a phone call yeah. or we meet for lunch, mm-hmm. meet for dinner. But never, I was out with my mentor till one in the morning. I'm not buying that. Well, I mean, you know, you never know what the mentor was doing. I, I don't. I don't. I know there's been a lot of people <laughs> making a lot of comments and speculations. So let me just call that out right now. I don't mm. assume anything from it about anybody unless I hear them say it. All I know mm. is I've never hung out with a mentor till one something in the morning and being, you know, being engaged and my girls mm-hmm. at home. I, I've never done yeah. that. So I don't, I just don't no. under, understand that deal at all. Now he did say that he let her know what was happening along the way. That he let her, she knew everywhere he was going. He did say that part. But again, if you know you're going to be late, that's the part of what you, it's, it's part of growing up. It's part of living with somebody. You're no longer just about you. When it's just you and your house and that's it. You stay out as long as you want and do what you want and don't have to report to anybody. And that's a great life. Until you decide to share that life with somebody else, then then that's out the window, right? Well, Brittany says, um, she has a lot to say in this and saying that she's missing the crave for the relationship. And Ken is quick to point out that he doesn't feel like he's missing this craving that she's spoke, is talking about for her. Yeah. He said, well, for you, it isn't there, but it's there for me. And I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. It's there for you? When y'all were on the boat, you didn't really want to touch her. That that's that's right. what you call crave. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what crave is for for Kenneth, but I'm like that's that's not it. And this yeah. whole conversation, it went way south than what I thought it was gonna go. I thought it was gonna be just like every other love is blind, where they're talking and then they you know we see him next time and and they're good. Um, so he felt he, he doesn't feel she has been introspective and looked at her role in why they haven't been intimate. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? And that's when he tries to go into, I tried to wake you up. Dude, this is your fault. That's, I was like, that's some gaslighting bullshit. I don't buy it mm-hmm. um, at all. And then, and Brittany even says, I'm very affectionate. She's told him that. And they barely kiss. They don't really make mm-hmm. out, which t- right. I didn't know they weren't making out. And so right. once I'm hearing all this, I'm like, Kenneth, this is all you right now. Mm-hmm. And that's because she's like, it feels awkward. Remember on the boat, she's like, no, touch on me. It feel, you know, you, touch me i i want that he was this is why you thought they were about to be better because he's like okay i didn't i didn't want to feel like i was crowding you and she's like no you can't touch me enough which says something right i mm-hmm. want you to so. touch me even though we said we, we committed we're not having sex until wedding day there's a mm-hmm. whole lot of things that we can do up until then and i would hope that we were doing some of that and she's mm-hmm. not feeling it now here's what this is where it just went way left for me that he walks away from this way too easily. He's just like, hey, so what I'm hearing you say is, you don't crave me, and that's cool. And pretty much, you know, God's gonna have something better for me and something better for you, but this is not gonna work. So give me a hug, mm-hmm. no hard feelings. All right, you good? Okay, then goes back to his phone and walks away. I'm like, you didn't even put up a fight. So no, he if there was those feelings for you, you didn't express any of that at all. So I'm like, mind blown on this whole situation. It's it's been a whole lot, right? Um, and people have been talking about exactly what is it, what's the reason for it, right? And a, a lot of it that's been coming up. Jay Noel says like, I don't like the assumption that it's because Britney was white. He knew she was. It's definitely something deeper. Because yeah, you're right. He knew she was. He knew in the pods. Matter of fact, he thought she was blonde. They, it was obvious to each of them that they were not of the same race. So that's not the issue. So what is the issue? I know, I I don't think it's the, it, 
I know episode seven, you know, we alluded to that maybe it's the race issue, maybe coming out to the real mm. world. Now it's like, crap, I got to really deal with with this. But I'm not seeing any of that. If you're not even touching this person, not making out, not showing any type of effort on your phone, just whole time, just being distracted, coming home mm. at one thirty in the morning. There's something else there. Don't know what it is. But I'm like, Kenneth, you that's lame. I mean, his whole everything he said is lame, the way he handled it. And poor Brittany. I think Brittany deserves better. If you're gonna put up a fight, put up a fight. But he was just like, all right, cool, and just walks away like it's nothing. Yeah. He had no Stone emotion. All that said, I love you and God said you're weird to be together. It's not happening. Stone River said she had too many black guys. He didn't want her. And Maybe they didn't have the conversation of, <laughs> of the fact that she dated uh, other uh, black guys before, and that maybe that's it. Who knows? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's just an interesting one, though. But there are a lot of people who had a lot of things to say, and uh, even saying, like, oh, I can't believe that oh, y'all, y'all so hurt that, that he didn't want the white girl. Stop it. Because that is definitely not. And those commenters in, in the last video, yeah, you were dead wrong on that one. Because that's not the reason. Brittany is doesn't matter and if and a lot of sisters will even talk about this and a lot of people have talked about it she was a good girl for him this he didn't want and oh stone river said he wanted a blonde <laughs> it could have been yeah. maybe that's what it was who knows and here's <laughs> people here's have a lot of other said, things too he, here's what we said when they first uh started to connect in the pods we were saying mm -hmm. that this is a real example of what love is blind is about can you fall in love with somebody not knowing mm -hmm. what they look like now, sound right. of voice, you can tell they're black. They initiated who, what race they were. But we weren't mm -hmm. rooting for the white girl. We weren't like, hey, Kenneth, ignore everybody else. <laughs> but go over that white girl. But anybody that says that, and, that, and that's, what I re that's what I realized about doing these, these reviews. Mm -hmm. and all, you're not going to make everybody happy. And people have preconceived notions about you, me, whatever. Nothing we're going to say is going to change that. But as they say, hurt people, hurt people. Whatever's going on in your world to make you think that Terrell and Yanni were conspiring, hoping that he would only pick the white girl. It's the most ridiculous comment that I could ever see. Hey, Deja says, knowing she was white and experiencing her whiteness is different. That could be true. That could be true. That is so funny. You, and the pods are so confined. This is what, here's the thing about this though. It's the same thing for everybody that's in these pods, right? You're in the pods, you're in a confined space, you're away. And once you get out, you get around each other, people get awkward. And then after that, they get comfortable. And then you throw them back in the real world and it's like, oh, now it's even more so. So <laughs> that's funny though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that could be it. He thought, this I can make this work. Then he gets around, he's like, mm, maybe not. But you know what? One thing I can probably say about Brittany, she probably mm. has more than two spices or seasonings in her house. <laughs> So. I'm, look, I'm sure she does. Uh, two <laughs> two last things on them before we move on, because we got to get moving on to the next one. Sean says she was trying too hard with the corporate language. Other than that, I liked her. I feel you because like Allison says, Kenneth decided he didn't identify as a fiance anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because again, that's if it's one thing that would have hurt me is to identify as as this, identify as that. I mean, I get calling out race, but I'm just the identifying. No, 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 no. This is this is what it is. What it is. It's, there's no need to identify it. It's it's been I, identified. I, I, I didn't understand the identify thing either. I was just like, mm, this is weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, next up was Chelsea and Jimmy, right? And Oh my God, this was tough to watch because Chelsea starts to whine about Jimmy working all day and he hasn't told her that she's pretty and or as, um, as uh, who put it up here first said early on, Nick Pick says, do you love me? 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 Do you love me now? But do you? Do you still love me? Tell me I'm pretty. And she even said that because he's <sighs> just Jimmy's looking like, where the hell is all this coming from? Right. And she's like, well, I just want you to come up and, you know, grab my face and say I'm pretty and you didn't do those things. And and then the whole baby voice, you didn't kiss me one time today. It made me sad. Ugh, I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't take it. Uh, 
Yeah, and then Jimmy, again for the thousandth time, said he made his decision to be with you because he's happy to be with you. No matter what Jimmy says, she keeps second guessing, questioning yes. him, wanting him to constantly prove and say it over and over again. It's just exhausting. Um, I will say this. He's going and he's trying, he's trying, he's trying, he's trying his best. Um, when we know the truth is she's just threatened by Jess, right? And he's everything he can to make her feel good. And then finally, he's just like, F it. You're clingy. <laughs> and then that just, yo, you want to talk about fire? Here, let me throw some more gas on there. <laughs> yeah, she's clingy. Clingy. I was like, ooh, man, she's going to burn the rabbit. She's going to burn, boil the rabbit on the stove. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she is. She lost it, and now she's super triggered and angry uh, to a level that just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, she even complained about the way he says "I love you." It's not the yes. right pitch or the, not the right tone, and mm -hmm. I don't blame Jimmy for losing it. You know, and mm -hmm. then she was like, "Well, you know, I guess she was trying to have sex," and he said, "Yeah, well, I want to take a little breather from having sex." <laughs> He said, oh, I don't need that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I need a timeout on that too. <laughs> Yo, that was hilarious. And it's, <sighs> she's too much. She really is too, this is why he is like, yeah, we could never have um, move into your place. But the thing about it, they never talked about getting a place together. It was like, all right, well, let's move into my closet and we'll, we'll, we'll keep that, you know. They never really talk about this. Well, why not just get a place for them for them together? Never understood it. Yeah. I don't know if he wants to live with her. Like, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> uh, Zero says, uh, Bree says, Zero uh, Bree Roll says, uh, Chelsea's doing this to herself. She really is. And she can't help it, though. That's the one thing. She cannot help it at all. Well, look, we get away from them for a quick second. And... We see Laura and we see Jessica. Jessica shows up. And here's the thing that's interesting to me. Jessica is missing her daughter Autumn so much that she went home, took two days to herself before texting Autumn and letting her know that she was back. Really? Mm. Would you miss her so much? I don't know if I buy that. I can't imagine a mom doing that. Exactly. I just can't imagine a mom doing that. As much as she, every time she talk about it, just, to, I'm sorry. That was a fake cry. That's, that's how you know that was yeah. a fake cry. Yeah. But that's every time, right? Just, you know, because I have a, t I'm sorry. So I just can't imagine her not calling her right away mm -hmm. um, or going to see her right away. But I looked at these two as like the gossipy mean girl crew. Mm -hmm. Get yeah. together to have some cocktails to spill some tea. Mm-hmm. Um, Jessica tells Laura about Jimmy sending her a friend request and then unsending it and this whole thing that's going on here. And then she's even saying that um, she, she's, she's still feeling Jimmy. And even after seeing him, she's still feeling him. And she'd, she'd be willing to, you know, see him. I don't know. I feel like that was for, that was for the TV, was for the cameras. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's for the camera because you don't tell the man you're gonna you're gonna need your epipen when you see what you missed. Uh -huh. I'm like, well, I don't think you really want it back. Mm -hmm. So, and I guess he what looked at her social media. Uh, I'm assuming it's Facebook, and mm -hmm. then she said it took eight hours before she was gonna actually respond, mm -hmm. and he had already re you know um, rejected the request and then put his stuff on private because he right. just wanted to know what she looked like. Is what she mm -hmm. thought. Right, which which is true. That's exactly what it is. She, he wanted to know what she looks like, and he's like, hmm. Um, and then she pointed out that uh, all of his exes look like her. Like her. Yep. Interesting. I said the same thing. I was like, hmm, that's quite interesting. If that's if she is normally what he goes for, uh, but she's not turning out that great. And then Laura, you know, wants to talk about Sarah Ann, and not only. To, she took a screenshot of the chat between Sarah Ann that she sent to Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you took a screenshot of it? Yeah. Just so you can have it on your phone? Mm-hmm. 
I yeah. thought that was a little cray cray. Uh, yeah, I didn't say it wasn't, <laughs> but I'm not surprised. <laughs> and we'll get to the whole was Jeremy wrong for liking it as we get to episode nine in a second. But first, before we get to episode nine, I just want to say this because Happy Gardner made a point, said, trust me, moms do that. She needed to decompress from the experience. So basically what you're saying is she just needed to decompress from going through all of that emotional um trauma of being in the pods and just needed to decompress so she didn't go back home and take it out on, on the child. I can see that. I just I, don't believe her. I can see it. <laughs> now, I could see her saying, hey, baby, mommy's back. I'm going to see you on Friday. Yes. Love you so much. I didn't, And you send a text message. Mm-hmm. That's great. But what she said is that she waited two days to text her daughter. And if mm-hmm. that's really true, I just don't buy that. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, she wouldn't have been back anyway had she gotten to the next level. So it's not like she, her daughter was going to miss her. So if she did text her, would she be like, well, when are you coming home? But well, mommy needs some days. Mommy needs about two days. I'll see your ass in two days. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, Shoshana says um, the reason why she took the screenshot, receipts. Women like receipts. Women like receipts. Let's just know that. Yeah. You saw it already. Like, <laughs> That's not enough, Gerald. That's not <laughs> enough. You need evidence. Your Honor, <laughs> she owe me, man. <laughs> I got the McDonald's bag in the back seat, Your Honor. <laughs> Take you back to Deaf Comedy Jam, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Episode 9, Chelsea and Jimmy back on good terms um, because he walked out in the last, in the last argument. It was right. Like, F it, I'm out. Smart move. Because you're going to keep hearing this all night, and you know you got to work the next day. How you feel about them being back? Well, I don't like Chelsea, so it doesn't, it, I'm not a fan. I'm like, Jimmy, you should have stayed gone. But I get it, right? <laughs> you, had a, you had a fight. You, you come back. You, you try to make it up. Apparently, he texted her that night, said, I love mm-hmm. you, and... Um, they're able to talk and, and, and try to get a little bit of understanding. Chelsea mm-hmm. didn't understand why he would say that she was clingy, which is one of her problems that she says she has to work through. And he definitely needs to work on his delivery, in Chelsea's words, a thousand percent. So mm-hmm. I'm glad they got a chance to make up, but I'm like, Jimmy, look at all the red flags. Yeah. Stay gone. The only thing I could say, at least they ended acknowledging that things, and both of them acknowledging things they did wrong and need to work on. Because I got irritated that she kept bringing the whole thing back up again. I'm like, Jesus, we just watched this last episode. Can we please move forward? But at least they acknowledge the things that they need to work on, right? Um, right. Now, <sighs> this kind of irritated me with Laura and Jeremy. They're, you know, getting ready for her, her family to show up. And they're doing flowers, and Jeremy says, you know, well, put some water in there so it doesn't, you know, tip over, and somebody's got to be a smart person. And then she makes the whole college degree comment, and that just irked me. It irked me, too, because I don't think that their their type of sarcasm and joking trash talk, I don't think it's healthy. Mm-mm. You know, or they haven't been together long enough to get at a place where they know that we're not taking jabs at each other. We're just kind of having fun. But outside mm-hmm. looking in, um, it bothers me. And Laura's the one with the college degree, yet she always says, it's giving. <laughs> this. It's giving it. Uh, it's giving that. So I don't know what what she majored in, but what in English? Uh, what's giving? Um, it was giving major. <laughs> So Laura's parents, her brother, and her sister-in-law come over for a visit. And did you notice that Laura let the dog lick her in the mouth? Yep, I saw that. And I knew you would catch that. I saw them like, yeah, I'm just going to talk about he that. He couldn't miss it. She got her lip pumped up. So, of course, he, he couldn't miss it. <laughs> he was like, something's wrong with your lip. Let me <laughs> yeah. So I think Jeremy's doing a good job of trying to engage with the family. And the family seems to, you know, be liking him a bit and then laura just gets messy again she brings up the sarah ann ig thing why do you bring that up Mm -hmm. to your family and all that then she keeps going in on the hawaiian shirts yeah again and i I was just like what is with this girl and i loved her dad said that if you make laura a princess and put her on a pedestal she'll walk all over you 
And mm-hmm. yes, we are seeing that right now. Yeah. It's 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 interesting because they know her. They know her very well. Even the sister-in-law is like, look, your brother loves these Hawaiian shirts, and I love that he loves them. Get past it. She can't because she's still stuck on these damn Hawaiian shirts. Like, oh, my God. Get over it. You're absolutely yeah. right. They're scared of her. <laughs> high, high school mean girl. Like, she yeah. had to be in the mean girl click. Like, oh, my God, you're, why are you wearing that? I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. And I love her sister's attitude. She's like, look, if this is something he's interested in, I want him to be happy and enjoy that. So I would even yeah. buy him more Hawaiian shirts. She's yeah. like, well, you can take some. There's a bunch upstairs. She's like, I don't want to take his Hawaiian shirts. I'm yeah, going to buy exactly. your brother some Hawaiian shirts. And that's that's why when it because I didn't understand why he met the brothers. Like, oh, we have some things in common. So I already like you. So they're already right. they're already bonding there because, you know, she's probably throwing her brother under the bus as well, too, over that. Um, AD and Clay, um, mm. they're meeting Clay's mom, Margarita, and his sister, Taylor. For lunch and did you notice and i said i'll bring this back up Nana, no, oh my god voice that um ad was using she used it when they said oh my god i bought you roses too <laughs> did you look at the way taylor looked at her and was like if, if you don't stop <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as she stopped using that voice everything just went <sighs> but she started yeah. speaking in her actual voice yeah because nobody wants to hear that yeah. Um, at all. And even Clay sitting there, although I, I think Clay still seems fake with his family, but it is what it is. <laughs> I think the sister asked, you know, what does uh, the sister, of the mom asked AD what she does. Now this was interesting. We mm-hmm. knew that AD, AD was a realtor. Mm-hmm. Didn't know she was running a nightclub and she's the VIP manager. Mm-hmm. I was like, mm, that was new information for me. Did you know that? I did not know that. And it was, it was, yeah. inter- but it, cause what I thought was interesting and very telling is t- um, Taylor's like, oh yeah, you know, yeah, I'll work today too. What did you do, AD? What did you do today? Because <laughs> apparently Clay's told her already, yeah, well, she's just sitting around the house. She doesn't even work right, right now. He's, right. That was so telling. And she purposely, because that's her brother, she teed that up to kind of, all right, let's, let's try and bury this girl. And the thing though um, is, is I like that when AD says she's cold. Yes. His mom, Clay's mom, Margarita, offers up her show. But why is Clay still sitting over there with a big ass sweater on and never offers it up? It was like, yeah, go ahead, put that thin thing over you. You'll feel better. I got. It's, I'm it's, nice and cozy over here. It's because he, he looks. He looks good in that outfit for TV. He's not gonna mess that up. <laughs> This is the Clay show. He's not going to mess that up. Why would he be like, oh, baby, here you go. Let me give you this. Yeah. No. no. It wouldn't have been. I thought that was really sweet and nice mm-hmm. of Clay's mom mm-hmm. um, to do that. And then Clay's sister asked AD how she feels about his work schedule. And I thought this was a really great dialogue for a group mm-hmm. of them. When AD said that she thinks that he will choose convenience and comfort. Mm-hmm. Um, she doesn't mind his schedule, but she wants to see him put in more effort for quality time. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is going to be a good conversation because I wanted to see what his mom was going to say based on whatever crap was going to come out of Clay's mouth. And Clay did not disappoint. Clay did not disappoint at all. I mean, an hour. I mean, now, granted, have, living in Atlanta, living in Houston, if you're going to the grocery store, it's probably about an hour depending on traffic, okay? So, yeah. <laughs> even if it's around the corner. But, no, to be fair, though, it's like for him to be just like, oh, well, you just got to understand. And two days out of the week, I got to this early in the relationship. That's a red flag, a huge red flag, because if this is my homegirl, I'm saying, did you see where he's staying? Because he's probably with some other chick. He's seen her those two days out of the week. Exactly what I was thinking, but let's just assume positive intent and Clay is not out there following suit of all the black men and his dad and everybody that he's ever been around. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I didn't like about this conversation is that Clay didn't listen to what she said. She's just saying that, Hey, I I appreciate you working a lot. I just want to make sure you're putting effort for quality time. Mm -hmm. So then he tries to turn it around and says, well, look, she just started working her job. She hasn't really gotten to her schedule yet. I've been working since we got back. I was like, what are you doing, dude? It was a fight for him. And I like the way yeah. that, here's the thing I, I give AD credit for, right? I like the way she handled him in this one. 
right? Because she's in a position right now, she's watching him show up and basically tell, I'm going to tell mama on you, and that's what he's doing, right? But she handled it, and then even when he got a little aggressive, she's like, she's like, whoa. And she just that little motion, whoa. Then he had to catch himself like, wait a minute. Like, she handled him like she should have handled those women on the beach. She should, right. <laughs> the way she should have, the way that people have been trying to drag us for saying she should have handled them women, that's exactly how she should have handled them, not just the way she should handle Clay. And she did it well with Clay, and she needed to do it with everybody else too. But she did it well with Clay, but what she should also pay attention to mm-hmm. is when she told Clay, and I don't mind about the schedule, and he just abruptly, well, then what's the problem? Yeah. If he's, he's willing like, to, if he's willing to talk to her like that in front of yes. his mama, what do you think he will be like? like when I would never talk crazy to someone I'm dating in front of my mom. I don't talk crazy to somebody I'm dating when my mom's not there, but especially when my mom's sitting right here. He, well, was, that, he felt no, nothing wrong with talking to her like that. I was like, are you kidding me? You know why? Because, a lo- okay, here's, um, so look at this. Happy Gardner says, Claire's not a gentleman. He's suave like his dad. No, here's the problem. And I'll tell you what the problem is. He's a mama's boy, right? Now, the problem is everybody's been giving his mom a lot of props in the, in the live chat. And I'm going to give her props too. But there's two, there are two places I'm going to take that away. And these are huge negatives. And this is one of them, Terrell, because she should have checked him at that moment. Yo, how are you going to talk to your fiance like that? Mm-hmm. Check him. That is right. your son. He's representing you. Because you already know what his daddy was like. She didn't check him. And that's a problem for me. Because there's no way I'm sitting at the table with my mom <laughs> and talking to anybody like that. And it doesn't matter if the cameras are rolling or not. She's going to check me. And I'm not right. going to just say that's just the West Indian woman in her. I'm just going to say that is the mother in her. Right. And he's not a mama's boy. He's a daddy's boy. Okay. He's acting like a mama's boy right now in front of AD because he went on all those infidelity trips with his dad that he didn't tell his mom about. So if he was a mama's boy, he'd have came home, Mama! <laughs> I saw daddy kissing. Like yeah. he would be telling on her. And so, yeah. no, he's not a mama's boy. And the fact that he felt comfortable enough to talk to AD that way in front of his mom and sister to me says a lot about how he possibly... Let me mm-hmm. back this up before I get beat up in comments again. <laughs> it makes me feel like if he's willing to do this in front of his mom and sister, what is he like with other women? Right. And what is what will he be like? I can't assume that he's always been this way, but that was way out of line. Way and of I line. can't believe that the mom and the sister weren't like, Negro, are you crazy? Right. And M. Smith agrees. You say he wasn't a mama's boy enough to tell her about that cheating. And you know what? CSG954 says he didn't even get up to greet his mama when she came into the restaurant. You know what? Y'all are right. I, mm. I recognize when I'm wrong. He is not a mama's boy. And she, but she has babied the hell out of him. She has babied the hell out of him. Because there's no way that if he's been disciplined properly growing up, that he talks like that in front of his mom. Mm-mm. That's so no. disrespectful. No, I can't even. No, mm-hmm. goodness, <laughs> <laughs> that just irritated me, man. But also, here's a, something else that irritated me, and and this is the second part with his mom that I did not like because I feel like she almost gave him an out. But she's like, well, here's what I'm gonna say from my 23 years of marriage, even though it didn't last. And I was like, all right, good. She's about to spit some game and. AD, you need to understand. <laughs> I was like, yo, hold up. <laughs> she needs to understand and his schedule because he doesn't want to come home. And then she actually told him that he needs to make time. So at least she said yeah. that. But again, she served him up and catered to him first and then told him something that he needed. But then didn't really say to him, just like, well, y'all need to make time. That's a problem. I think that part of the advice was good about you need to make time. Mm -hmm. If it's important to you, make time. Mm -hmm. I think she could have held out the my 23 years of experience because if you've been a cashier for 23 years and your register is always short and then you're going to give me advice on how to be a cashier, I don't think I should listen to all of your advice. Stop it. It's not her fault that man cheated on her for 23 years. Stop it. No, no, I'm not blaming her for that. 
I'm not blaming her for that. You know but that's what they're going to say in the comments. <laughs> oh, I, I'm not saying it's the mom's fault. All I'm saying is I got to take your 23 years with a little grain of salt because there's a whole lot of things that happened that maybe AD would be like, there's no way in hell I'd be okay with. So I know there's probably more to this story. We don't know all the details. Yeah. Clay spilled all the tea. All I'm saying is a little grain of salt with her 23 years. <laughs> they got me somebody in the comments Terrell said all black women <laughs> yeah. all black women let men cheat I'm like no all I'm saying is she put up with a lot of cheating for 23 years so <laughs> Terrell said don't take advice from black women <laughs> <laughs> I can read the National yeah. Enquirer headlines right now that's what's happening right, I stop. just don't think AD is the type that would tolerate a cheating clay for 20 something years no, where whatever cheating. reason the mom did her situation wherever she did that's good for her mm -hmm. all i'm saying is grain of salt with some of the advice that she's given <laughs> grain of salt is hilarious <laughs> <laughs> something you won't find in kenneth's kitchen all right, Nothing so in Chelsea... Kenneth's... <laughs> a, just a dash of oregano with her opinion <laughs> Chelsea and Jimmy, they're meeting Jimmy's friends. Um, <clears throat> and here's what I thought was interesting. When they ask Chelsea, uh, once they found out she'd been married before, why does she feel like she's ready to be married again? And Chelsea starts running down the lies, starting with, well, I've matured. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? What show am I watching? <laughs> you know... I had to laugh when she said that. What has she learned that out of you know after being divorced that she's matured and um, and all these different things? I'm like, no, you you haven't, mm -mm. and you probably need to have some therapy and some counseling before you really get married uh, to someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, first thing I was noticing is I think Chelsea was trying to size up Jimmy's friends to see how attractive they are to see if it's a threat because right. we know she doesn't like any of that. Uh, but then she gets into some of her insecurities. She tells them that previous guys who've had girls that were their friends have cheated on me with those friends. So, you know, I was a little reluctant. So she's kind of letting them know, hey, I'm already trying to keep an eye on y'all two right now. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, uh, a couple things here. <laughs> Ruby Ray says, not Chelsea calling herself mature and Megan Fox. <laughs> <laughs> And then Tina and Otis <laughs> said Jimmy has slept with at least one of those girls, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And I you think it's the so dark-haired one. I think Which, it's the dark-haired one. Wait a minute. Ba is that uh, Barbara? Because what was the first hug Jimmy gave her friend? Is that was that the, was that the dark-haired one? I don't remember the order, but I think it's the dark because the other one said he's like a brother. Now. Mm -hmm. It, it, to my knowledge, no one I've ever slept with has said, yeah, Terrell is like a brother to me. So I think the other one didn't say that. So I'm thinking that maybe the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Love is blind, Alabama. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, uh. So... It, it's. I was actually prepared for Chelsea to be jealous of these women, and even when the, the whole sex thing came up, and when they're like, "Yeah, well, Jimmy doesn't turn down sex," isn't that right? <laughs> so maybe, maybe they're right. Maybe I questioned it just because, but then apparently, I wasn't the only one who thought it because you did too. Um, I did too. This one, <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's who I was thinking he slept with. Is that one? I think her name was Barbara. Then she had like the darker hair. Yeah, that one is the one I think that he hooked up with. But y'all stupid man, <laughs> tittabitties. <laughs> oh, I swear to chat, y'all are amazing, man. Y'all are amazing. Um, Amy and Johnny, they were they were pretty uneventful in, in this entire one because you know when we first see them, they're playing around in the house. We next see them, they're learning bachata, and then we see them when they're meeting his sisters. Can you say that again? Nope, I cannot. <laughs> I <was> just like, <laughs> bachata! <laughs> I saw him learning bachata. <laughs> just want to make you, I want to make you laugh real oh, quick. Oh, goodness, all. goodness. <laughs> so they're meeting um, Johnny's, Amy's meeting Johnny's sisters, Maria, 
and Anna and Maria's fiance, Cameron. Mm -hmm. And they all seem to have had a ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd have thought that they, this is not their first meeting. Right. They seem like they've known each other for a while. Mm -hmm. They all really loved um, Amy. Mm -hmm. um, Amy really shows how much she really knows about Johnny, but also how much she cares about Johnny. Like they're all sold from this whole meeting, which I was like, good for Johnny. Cause you don't see that in some of these other folks meeting each other's families, but this is one of the best ones I've seen in a long time. Um, apparently J Noel um, says it was fine that they had yeah, the family was good and everything, but they can't, dance bachata because it's too sexual and she might get pregnant <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well but he, he had on jeans she had a <laughs> it can't jump through the clothing but again he does yeah, have the super, super sperm. sperm he's got a super <laughs> sperm that's just gonna <laughs> hey tina and otis said did you see the dog at the table um terrell is fine with that by the way i'm the one that's no. not gonna be fine with what terrell does not have dogs at tables I mean, you kissed him in the mouth. What are you talking I'd about? I never do that. You keep saying that. Whatever a dog did to you that hurt you, if he, if he, a dog poked you in the poop chute and it makes you feel hey, uncomfortable. Hey, hey, hey. Whatever issue you have with dogs, that's You and your you. dogs do together. Stop. I have never had a dog on the table. Dogs don't sit up on the chair to eat off the table. Dogs don't lick me in the face, ever. Mm. But I mm. love dogs over cats. All you day, said doggy day. kisses. You've said doggy kisses. Well, you, you kiss like the dog. Kisses. I don't want the dog to kiss me in my mouth. Mm. Okay. All right, Laura. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, we see Jeremy come in, sit down, and you're like, uh-oh, what happened? And then uh, it's obvious that there's tension in the room because Laura comes down, are you just going to leave your shades on? And that's, that's how you're going to talk to me? <sighs> <sighs> okay. I was curious to see what was up. Because this whole body language is like, okay, I'm about to get into some shit. Yeah, she comes downstairs. It's like he's he like he, you ever know you're in trouble? It's like brace. Let me just cross my leg, shades <laughs> on. Okay, bring it. Like he knew it was about to. He was about to catch some smoke. Uh, oh, yeah. But he was ready for it. I give him his credit. He was ready. He was absolutely ready for it. Um, Nicole says uh, Johnny has some nerve. No, Johnny has some guts to be able to sit there and go like, all right, whew, let's go. Then he took the shades off. He's like, all right, you want to see my eyes? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and we find out why. Because if we're mad at Ken, Kenneth, for staying out till 1, 1.30 um, with his mentor and getting his hair braided and twisted and all that stuff that takes till 1.30 in the morning, um, then Jeremy was four hours more wrong for being out till five, actually almost five, because five hours more wrong because he was out till almost six o'clock. Okay. And I really believe like there had to been some editing of how they played this conversation because the conversation doesn't flow the mm -hmm. way they shared it. But let's just break it all, you know, combine it all together. Yeah. He's out till five. Mm -hmm. Laura's like, hey, well, bar closed at two. Where were mm -hmm. you? And then he makes this whole, you know, well, Sarah Ann was going to be there and, and she wanted to talk mm -hmm. and yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what he should have said. And yeah. Then he tried to say, you know, we sat in the parking lot and we just talked. And mm -hmm. then he tried to make it sound like because he shared his location that everything should be okay and Laura mm -hmm. shouldn't be upset. And so she's like, well, okay, where were you? Because your location said, he goes, I was in the parking lot. There was a back alley. She's like, no, you weren't even in the same vicinity of the parking lot <laughs> or the bar because you shared your location. You were over in this part of town where Sarah Ann lives. So the funny thing about that, right? Because he's like, well, you should trust me because I gave you my location, right? And as they're saying in the chat, Happy Gardener goes, Jeremy forgot that his Apple Watch still tracked his location. It's, and, and that's also what um, Sarah S is saying, um, not Sarah Ann, but Sarah S says he turned on his location and then tried to lie about it, about where he was. Yes, because what happened was he didn't expect it to be up checking it. And she played it so smooth, though. The one of the things you've got to realize that what Laura did, right? So Laura gets in there. And it's like, well, where were you? And lets him tell this elaborate lie. And she sits, I was in the parking lot. I was, this. she just, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she's just letting him tell it. And that's, fellas, <laughs> fellas, you've got to realize when this is happening, you're being set up for the okie doke and you got to stop talking because that's exactly what happened. 
he kept talking and he kept saying this the whole time she knows she knows and she's watching and she's been up she's like i was asleep i was asleep i was asleep yet no she wasn't <laughs> she was around and she was up checking and she's just like i'm gonna let him keep telling this lie keep talking well, about it keep talking now about it, it makes sense <laughs> now it makes sense when they're like receipts Yes. This is why they keep this receipts. This is what they were talking about. Yes, this is this is what they meant by keeping receipts. Is because she just let him go on. Okay, so where were you? Mm -hmm. What happened? Da -da -da. And she knew the whole time mm -hmm. that he was over by Sarah Ann's house. Yeah. Now, Insane. Here's, here's how you know some of these women in the chat have caught guys this way before because they're all giving up the secrets. He kept his phone in the car and forgot to watch. So you're saying he left his car there, left the phone in the car, like put it under the seat so nobody could steal it, got in her car and went with her is what it sounds like. If you got the Apple Watch, it's going it, to... It's like it records your steps. <laughs> Ah, hey, but this is this. These are the things that this is how you know. Either women have caught their men that way, or they know how to cheat this way. I just want to say, ladies, you're telling on yourself. I just want to point that out. <laughs> so, to me, it almost seemed like Jeremy didn't care. Like I want to get caught, mm -hmm. and I did this. I gave you my location, and then you rode over to Sarah Ann's house. It's like he wanted to get caught, and he didn't care mm -hmm. about it. So maybe that was his that was his style or his motive here is I'm gonna get maybe caught, she can to, blow it up, had, she'll end it with me, and I won't be the bad guy. Maybe he had the phone and the Apple Watch, and that's why he shared his location in the first place. Cause like Rosemary says, Jeremy did not care that she knew. He made up his mind that he was sick of her when he saw Sarah Ann and Laura had it coming when she tried to do to Chelsea and Jimmy. Happens to her. Does. Now, Maureen, I, I think you're right. She, uh, Maureen says, let's talk about how she was right about him not shutting it down with Sarah. Which Ann. is because I was going to ask that question earlier. And I said, let's wait till episode nine. Was he wrong for liking it? Because he just because think about it, even with her family, with, with the uh, when they brought it up with his with uh, Laura's family. Right. Remember, Laura's sister in law was like, well, you should have just given it a thumbs up instead of a heart. And he's like, well, I just double tapped it. You can still change that if you wanted to. You know that, right? Well, you can, but there's times you've sent me something, whether it be a reel or whatever, and I just double tap it because I'm just you know, at a red light or at work. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean like, ooh, I love you, Yanni. I just was like, yeah, that's... <laughs> Acknowledge that I saw it. We know why he double tapped it. Because <laughs> he wants to double we tap all... it. <laughs> he, exactly. We all know why he did it. <laughs> but in, in this situation... Yes, he's wrong for not shutting it down. If you really want to be with Laura, you should have been like, hey, look, appreciate you. I'm glad you're doing well. I'm really happy in my relationship. I wish you the best and move on. Mm -hmm. But then also, here's the crazy thing about Jeremy. Not only mm -hmm. does he double tap it with the heart, then he goes, hey, Laura, look at this. Yes. What do you think of this? Check and this shows out. shows her with the double tap. <laughs> shows her the whole thing and lets her take a screenshot from her phone then he goes out, gives her his location, and comes home at five in the morning. So mm -hmm. I think there's something up with Jeremy on this. Like he's, I don't, I don't know what his deal is, but the dude, maybe he likes drama. Mm hmm Or he was like, yeah, I can't deal with this. <laughs> and actually, I should have gone this way before. And now that I've seen her, and she's telling me she's still. Be Here's the thing. There was no way for him to win and I actually thought she let him off easy mm -hmm. the first time. She let, we, you can say, oh, she went a little hard. No, she let him off easy because there are a lot of people who would break up over that. You liked it. I know what that means because the guy's going to say no. That's, that's not what it means. Of course not. But you... I didn't respond. I didn't say anything back. Yeah. But what you did was she knocked on the door and you unlocked it. And not even unlocked it. You left a crack so that she could walk in. That's what he did. That's exactly what it is. And we know that. It's, it, we can't even pretend like that's not what happened. We know that's what happened. 
We do, 100%. Like, Jeremy knew what he was doing, and he's good with it, and he's he's cold busted. But now Sinan's fans ask, so do men really stay up until 5 a.m. talking to their ex? When Come you say now. talking, what do you mean? Is that what the kids are calling it nowadays? <laughs> talking? <laughs> no. When no. you say talking, what do you mean? <laughs> no, no. And even, even if Sarah you're trying Ann to really set up the, uh, well, kind of, eh. kind of an ex, ex from the pod. They had a relationship ex. through the wall, mm -hmm. but yeah. no, no guy is up at 5 a.m. talking to their ex unless, I can't even think of a reason. I can't think of a situation where you would talk to your ex at 5 a.m. Well, hold up. Laura didn't ask the right questions because she wasn't in the pods with them. Remember, Sarah Ann is the one who loves to have conversations during sex. So he was up just talking to her. <laughs> Could have been. I've solved it. Yeah, but what was that conversation like? Was it like, man, Laura is just so crazy. You would not believe the drama. When you sent me that IG message, turn around for a second. When you sent me that IG <laughs> message, she was mad. <laughs> Yeah, hold up. So here's the interesting one. J. Noel says, Sarah Ann is conservative. There's no way she would do anything, right? Now, conservative in political, in political leagues. Yeah. That's it. Don't think they're not freaky on the right. That's why they keep getting yeah. caught doing stuff. Trump's conservative. <laughs> Trump is supposedly conservative, but we know he does things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey, like Drew says, he didn't lie. He didn't. They were talking. See, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but, uh, oh, hey, Dor Dorica says, hold up. He said women weren't capable of having a conversation during sex with him, and that's how we got back to her place. He's like, I'll prove it. <clears throat> <laughs> Lucky for him, he's not lying when he said we had conversation because she kept talking. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think Jeremy's uh he's a bit of a wild card now. I mean, I, I had a lot of positive things about him, but just watching this whole deal, I think he just doesn't care. Whether I find love mm -hmm. or not, I'm going to do me, and I'm going to have fun doing whatever I do on TV. Y'all deal with it. I feel like that's what he's doing. Before we get out of here, this question real quick. Um, Drew says, Laura is the wife everyone should be afraid of. Trying to control your life instead of just letting you be you. But isn't there a limit to letting you be you? Yes. If letting you be you is strolling the house at 5 a.m., no. <laughs> what, what, what wife wants that? <laughs> and then lying about where you are after you sent her the... She's not controlling. Now, is she annoying? Yes. Is she someone that's mm -hmm. kind of that mean girl, the attitude, and just the way that she, I feel like she has a very immature thought process. But I don't mm -hmm. look at her as, as this bad wife that you don't want. It's Jeremy's mm -hmm. the one that did all the things. You know, Jeremy should have shut mm -hmm. it down with Sarah Ann, just like Laura said. And Jeremy should have brought his butt home at 210 when the bar mm -hmm. closed. You don't hang out in the parking lot with your wife's, your fiance's competition till 5 a.m. Yeah. Um, okay, let's get a couple of these things out before we get out of here. Um, one, Sean Unfiltered uh, said, hey guys, quick question off topic. What happened to the Ron interview? Did I miss it? No, you didn't. Well, you did, kind of, yeah, because we did drop it. <laughs> so it's there. It's still up. Um, go check it out. It's, it's the one that says, was the date that, was the catfish that good or the date that bad? And that's actually um, LaRon from Ready to Love and also some of the other castmates that jumped in as well. He had a few friends jumping with him at the beginning of the interview. So pretty entertaining and a lot of insight that goes into and actually some of the things he said that we would see in the next episode, um, which is Friday's episode of Ready to Love, which we will recap tomorrow, right? Right. <laughs> These days just keep flying, man. There's so many. Yeah. So many of them. <laughs> So Bodine had um, a couple of things, right? Well, one of the things he, he said first, um, did we all see that Kenneth's cousin outed him, right? Um, I didn't see it, but I heard about it. Did I heard about it? it. I heard about mm -hmm. it. I didn't see it. 
But again, mm -hmm. until I hear Kenneth say it, I don't trust mm -hmm. stuff like that because you just never know. Right. What if that's an estranged cousin that hates him? It's just going to put that out there. And so far, everyone right. has ran with it. I don't know. I never assume what anyone's sexuality is until they tell me what, what it is. And I run with that. Here's the thing I noticed, too. There are... <laughs> Anytime something goes on in, the, in in these reality TV shows, somebody always they always goes, well, he must be gay then, right? And, and it's it's always we see it in the chat, we see it in the comment sections, we see it popping up a lot. Um, and I don't think it's fair to do that just because he may not have liked her, but so be it. And at the same time, Nadi Nitter says, I don't like Kenneth, but as a gay woman who grew up in the South, his cousin never should have outed him that can be a death sentence. And it's his business. Right. That is his story to tell anyway. So I agree in that case, right? You shouldn't, um, shouldn't, you shouldn't put somebody out there like that if that is the case. Right. And if it, if is, it, if it is, it's his business. If it is true, you shouldn't do it. If y'all are family, you don't do that. But if it is true, you shouldn't do it. But also everyone shouldn't assume it's true just because someone's claiming to be Kenneth's cousin because you might not, they might not be Kenneth's cousin. Could just be some random mm -hmm. dude, who knows? Yeah. Um, oh, wait. Uh, Jay Noel also said Kenneth was on the Kelly Clarkson show when he became a principal. Okay, I didn't know about that. I also never I watched the Kelly Clarkson show. So I saw that clip, <laughs> but it was just him pubbing yeah. the school and things they're doing at the charter school. But nothing about right. that made me think anything of him. Did you also see this? I think I sent this to you. Um, did you see Trevor and his ex scheme to be on the show? The ex released to Texas. The, te the Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, grammar police. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I always yeah. call people out when they say that. I can't believe I actually said that. Next, I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that. I, I, I saw the text. Uh, again, I, I need Trevor to confirm because anybody could claim to be his ex, put that stuff out there, whether it be Photoshop or fake, and put it out there and everybody runs with it. I don't know. I saw it. It mm. seems messy. And if it is true, um, Trevor, you're not the great guest on. I thought you were. Yeah, it seems like everybody's like, ooh, what, what about, man? It's, it's been wild. Um, then Brandy Yvonne says, because that, there's so much coming about the cast on this show, man. Jeremy seemed nerdy in the pods, but turned out to be the biggest F-boy. Come to find out he was also engaged before. It's like a lot of stuff coming out. They, you made a great point about this. Like They have to address this on the reunion, right? They have to. They well, can't ignore it like they've been ignoring everything else. I hope that they address this on the reunion. You know, if people answer it or if people mm -hmm. don't show up, you know, mm -hmm. who knows? I would hope that they address it. And I think they should because right now there's so much speculation that's going on. And, of course, it's like a game of telephone. The story keeps getting better and better, bigger and yeah. bigger, different. You know, each person that, that tells it that I think they should be able to address this. And that's Trevor. Kenneth, any of them, that all their tea is coming out, somebody needs to come up and say something. If they don't, well, that's on them. Taylor says, never trust a dude with a forehead rash. <laughs> I'm talking about Trevor. <laughs> what, if that, what if that's from the, you know, what if he takes steroids or something as part of his workout uh -huh. regimen? Maybe that's what that could be from. Yeah, it could be. Still never trust him. And um, it's interesting because my wife was like, look, they might as well just end this this show now because it's it's a done deal if this is what keeps happening. Like it's just getting worse. It's like everybody on the show says something. What is it really now? I'm curious. They Trevor and his girl should have just signed up for the ultimatum. Jeremy and his girl should have signed up for the ultimatum. That's what that's the case. You want to be on TV, do that show. But hey. Ah oh, man. Mm-mm mm mm. -mm, -mm, -mm. And by the way, M. Smith said that's just as bad. You don't want a dude on steroids. Well, to be fair, neither Terrell nor I want a dude, period. <laughs> that's not what she was trying to say. I know. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I, I, I got to. I just I wanted to go end to, on a bad joke. <laughs> uh, I got to go to Happy Gardener when I was talking about the crystals. She said, as a yes. fellow crystal girl, I can relate. And yes, I'm a little out there sometimes. Not Chelsea crazy, though. So see what I was saying about mm -hmm. crystals. It's, some people are out there. But happy garden. I'm glad you mm. follow us. And you're in, the, you're in the chat with us. So you rock them crystals yeah. all day long. 
<laughs> hey, Ayo um, Fatu says they're all on perfect match. Trevor and Jessica. It's it's like now it goes from one reality show to the next. You don't make it as long as you make enough of an uh, of an impact. Um, then all of a sudden you're on to the next show. Because remember that with uh, uh, yep. the Bachelor. Was it The Bachelor? Yeah. So, yeah. <sighs> and to end us all, High Vibe says, this show has proven that love is not blind. Nope. And so is Jessica. You know it. You know it. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we'll see the next ones and we'll be on it next time, man. I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm Just Terrell. Make sure you follow us at Yanni Rude, at Just Terrell, and at RGRT Pod. Yeah, send us some of your random thoughts from the bullshit found on the internet. We'll talk about it on the show. It's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.